Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. So I'm back with another quick and easy Indian dinner party menu. I know I haven't posted this kind of video for so long, but wait until you see this recipe as usual. It's gonna be very quick and we're gonna have our own twist to it. So especially with the dessert recipe. Now dessert recipe that I'm sharing is very traditional, but to make it, it's very complicated. You have to have everything in proper proportion. But the way I'm gonna make it, we're gonna have our own twist and it is such an easy way to make. You cannot go wrong with it. And I'm sure next time when you wanna make that, you will use this recipe. So let's go in the kitchen and let's get started. Gulab Jambu is traditional and such a comforting dessert, but it is also tricky to make. So today I'm going to share with you very easy Gulab Jambu recipe using Hawaiian bread. You heard me right guys, we're going to use the bread to make the Gulab Jambu. After trying this recipe, I'm definitely sure that you cannot tell but this gulab jambu is made out of bread. It is such a foolproof recipe. Anyone can make it. So we'll take about eight sweet rolls and definitely you want to use this bread and not any other kind of bread because the Hawaiian bread is sweet enough for us to use for the gulab jambu. So I'm just going to put it in a blender, blend so we have a proper texture for the gulab jambu. Next I will add about one third teaspoon baking powder and also we'll need about five to six tablespoon whole milk you definitely want to use the whole milk for this and not any kind of milk and when you add the milk in it you want to add one or two tablespoon at a time not more than that and just after adding a couple of tablespoons just go ahead and mix it and see how much more milk you need it and then we'll just have this dough ready like a chapati yada and uh, Next, we'll just form the ball out of it. So for that, I'm just going to grease my palm and uh, form the ball. Now for that, you want to make sure that there is no crack in it. Now for the roll syrup, I'm taking one one third cup of water. Into that, add about one cup of sugar. Also, I will add some rose essence. If you don't have a rose essence, you can add the rose water. If you are not a big fan of rose flavor, then you can also add just two or three cardamom pods and that should be fine. After mixing everything properly, we'll let this boil on uh, medium heat. Meanwhile, the oil is hot, so I'm going to go ahead and deep fry the gulab shampoo. For that, you want to keep in mind that temperatures should stay about low to medium because if it's too high, then what will happen that the gulab shampoo will get golden brown from outside very quickly, but then it will not get cooked properly from inside. So take your time, be gentle with it, and just deep fry them. We'll keep that on a side. We'll wait until the syrup is ready. And definitely, guys, out of all this recipe from this video today, if you do want to try one, go with this recipe because the day I tried it, I got so excited that I cannot wait to share this recipe with you guys because it is so foolproof. No one can go wrong with this recipe. <laughs> so try this. Now, meanwhile, we'll go ahead and start with the sabji. So I'm making two sabji today. I'm making alu sabji as well as the paneer sabji. Now for the aloo, you can definitely use the canned potatoes, you can boil the potatoes, it's up to you. But uh, I'm making dahi wale aloo. This recipe again guys, so easy to make and even the paneer also, just wait until you see the paneer recipe because that also 
didn't take that long and came out so perfect. Now we definitely want to flavor this aloo, right? So for that, I'm going to add some oil in the pan. Now, meanwhile, my syrup is ready. So I want to take care of that first. So I'm also adding some saffron at the end. Now you do want to add it at the end and not while it, it was boiling. So just add pinch of saffron in there. And I will add all the gulab jambu that we fried in here. And guys, oh my gosh, by just looking at this right now, it's making me like I need to make this recipe again. <laughs> Even the hot gulab jambu, guys, if you eat it, oh my gosh, that tastes so good. So also, I'm going to add some rose petal at, on top. And I'll, I cover this for about 10-15 minutes. And... Uh, then we enjoyed that uh, hot gulam jambu. Came out so, so, so perfect. For dahi wale alu, here in a pan, I do have some oil. Once the oil is hot enough, add some haldi powder, red chili powder, salt to taste, as well as the kasuri methi. This step is actually extra. If you don't want to do this, that's totally fine. But I want to make the alu a little bit crunchy, as well as the flavorful. Otherwise, when we bite into it, it just doesn't taste anything. So that's the reason I like to take this extra step and flavor the alu. For this, as I mentioned earlier, you can boil the potato, cut them into pieces, and you can use that. If not, if you do have the canned potatoes, you can also use that as well. I'm going to mix everything very well. Keep there for about 5 to 7 minutes so that way the alu get a little bit crunchy. Meanwhile, we'll go ahead and get the gravy ready. So for that, I'm taking about 1 cup plain yogurt. And uh, this recipe, again also, very easy to make. Especially in the winter time, guys, try this. It tastes so good. Also adding some masala, so haldi powder, red chili powder. Also adding just a pinch of hing in there. Of course, we want some salt and as well as the cumin tanya jeera powder basically. Also adding some oil into it and we'll just go ahead and mix this first very well. In a separate pan, I'm going to add some oil. Once the oil is hot enough, adding some cumin seeds as well as pinch of hing and of course we need some green chilies. Green chilies is up to you, how less or more you want to add it. Um, and also we need some chopped onions. We like spicy, so I add more green chilies in there. And then we'll let this onion cook completely. It will take anywhere from 7 to 10 minutes. And then the yogurt mixture that we made it with all the spices in it, you want to go ahead and add that. Now while you are adding this, you want to add a little bit at a time, make sure the stove is off otherwise you're gonna have a disaster in the kitchen <laughs> it's gonna splash everywhere so just add a little bit at a time make sure the stove is off and then keep mixing it also i add some uh, water into the same pan and just add that in there so you can have like proper gravy consistency we're gonna let that boil because we want to make sure that all the masala that we added get cooked it will not take more than i would say five seven minutes and after that just go ahead and add the aloo in there let this boil and at any time if you feel like the gravy is way too thick just go ahead and add some water and let that boil again for a few minutes and that's about it guys just add the cilantro on top and your dai wale aloo is ready Next, we'll make everyone's favorite Dhaba style Hariyali Paneer. For that, I'm taking some oil. Instead of oil, you can use ghee. And I do have the big cubes of paneer. So I'm going to let that get crispy on all sides. It will just take a few minutes. But this step is totally optional. If you don't want to make the paneer crispy, no worries. You can just add the paneer at the end in the gravy. And that should be fine as well. For the gravy, 
again taking some oil in the pan instead of oil you can use the ghee and i'm gonna add some chopped onions now we need to let this onion cook for at least i would say five to seven minutes and once the onion is about 75 percent done we'll add some green chilies as well as some garlic green chilies up to you how spicy you want it and also adding some cashew we're gonna let this saute for i would say another five minutes or so and now for the hariyali part i'm adding one bunch of uh, cilantro you can also add spinach as well as mint in here but i just add the cilantro now when you add the cilantro make sure that the stove is off and just keep mixing it it's not gonna take you that long to just mix everything very well and next i'm gonna transfer this into the blender so we want to go ahead and blend this and as a uh, name of the sabji say you know there is no tomatoes it's not tomato based gravy so i'm gonna blend once and for the second time i'm gonna add one cup of yogurt in here after you add the yogurt you want to again blend everything very well and here in the same pan i'm taking one tablespoon ghee into that add some cold red chilies as well as the cinnamon stick and uh, some bay leaf now this is up to you if you do want to add some garam masala powder at the end you can go ahead and do that but i'm just adding it at this point because then it you know it give really good aroma to the gravy and then the gravy that we just blended i'm just gonna go ahead and add that in here mix everything very well at this point yes it looks so thick so i'm gonna add some water as well we want to let this cook for about seven minutes and then add some usual masala so dhania jeera powder haldi powder as well as the red chili powder now we don't need to add too much other masala because already the green chilies garlic and everything is in there and once the you know the ghee or the oil whatever you have added at the first gets separated then you want to go ahead and add some more water in this because at this point again we just want to make sure that the masala get cooked properly of course you do want to cover this um, and then just go ahead and add the paneer in there and that's it guys as you see this recipe as well right it's not hard at all it is such an easy recipe and also i did add actually just a pinch of uh, garam masala at the end and also if you like you can add some kasuri methi uh, salt to taste of course and if you have the mint powder because in my case i didn't have the mint but i add the mint powder also in there and let me tell you guys it smells so good this is such a unique and different uh, recipe and at the end of course this is optional but i just took some oil add some uh, kashmiri lal mirch so it give really nice color to it and that's it our sabji is ready dinner is not complete without the rice so we'll go ahead and make the masala rice for that here in a pan taking some ghee into it add some cumin seeds and uh, just whole garam masala so tej patta as well as the long and the cinnamon sticks some cashew also in there and green chilies yes i had green chilies in everything uh, just go ahead and mix everything and of course we want some cilantro in here as well when you make the rice with this uh, recipe it again it looks good and it tastes really good you can also add some chopped uh, onion as well but i'm not adding any onions and here i do have the rice ready so as you can see it looks perfect and you want to make sure that the rice you cook before so that it cools down completely and then just go ahead and add this mixture in there add some salt and that's about it it cannot get easier than this um, but if you make this way guys i guarantee you your rice will smell and taste so good so the rice is ready now let's go ahead and take care of the appetizer because the appetizer recipe that i'm about to share you want to make this at the very end just before you are ready to serve you want to go ahead and make this so we are making the proper chart here which is again very very easy you can use any kind of popper for this 
So I'm using the Punjabi poppers and you want to cut them into small pieces, not too small, not too big, just about like a bite size pieces. And also you can add some potato chips in here too. That also tastes really good. And now we'll just add all the usual chopped ingredients. So first I'll have some cucumbers and uh, some tomatoes, onions. Um, you can have the green chutney and some meaty chutney. The only one thing that I was missing is the Singh Bujia. Singh Bujia, you can add this into this chart and oh my gosh, that also tastes so good. But I didn't have it. Um, so here also I'm adding some chaat masala in here because we need to flavor all this uh, tomato, onions and the uh, cucumbers. Also adding some green chutney. My green chutney also was so spicy and add some meaty chutney as well, some cilantro, also add some save, those nylon save if you have it, you can add that, if not just any, but let me save also actually tastes really good and of course there's no way you want to skip this and that is the pomegranate seeds, definitely guys you have to have that because that gives a really good crunch also and it's a combination of the poppered and all the other ingredients and the sweetness from the chutney as well as the pomegranate Gosh, that entire combination, guys, you have to try this recipe. It tastes so good. So that was my appetizer. All this recipe that is you saw, guys, such an easy recipe to make. And that, you know, yes, it takes a little bit of effort, but I love cooking for my family. So this was actually our Diwali dinner. And I'm so, so, so sorry, guys, that this video is coming late. But of course, you know, I definitely want to share this with you guys. Because now, you know, the New Year party will be coming. And uh, if you have a get-together, if you are going somewhere and it's a potluck party, you can try any of this recipe. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Take care, and I will see you soon in my next one. Bye.